In this video, we will talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are the lines with the same steepness, so they must have the same slope. For example, like these two wires, they are slanted with the same steepness, or the parallel layers of brick in the wall, or even in the woods, those are parallel vertical lines. But how do we recognize if the two given equations represent parallel lines or not? Well, since parallel lines must have the same slope, we just need to compare slopes. So what is the slope of the line represented by the first equation? Well, this equation is in a slope-intercept form, so it's really easy to read the slope. It's just the leading coefficient by x. So slope for this line is 4. And how do we find slope of the line represented by the second equation? Well, this equation is given nearly in standard form, but not exactly, because standard form must start with x, not with y. So maybe let's rewrite it in a standard form. That could be written as negative 12x plus 3y, just switching the terms with x and y, equals 5. So this is a lot closer to standard form, however, we would like to start with a positive number. So we may want to as well change all those signs and we end up with 12x minus 3y equals negative 5. It's not necessary for finding the slope, but that's the standard form. Okay, so let's recall how do we read slope from a standard form of equation. Well, remember if the coefficient by x is called a and the coefficient by y is called b, the slope is equal to negative a over b. So in our case, a over b is 12 over negative 3, which is negative 4, but we have to switch the sign, so it's actually positive 4. Well, bingo! That's the same slope. Therefore, the two lines are parallel. Instead of word parallel, we can use the sign two vertical sticks like that. Okay, let's check the second example. This time we deal with special lines. What are those lines? Horizontal or vertical? How do you think? Yes, they are horizontal. Y is kept at the same level, but X can be anything. So, if both of these lines are horizontal, the slope for both of them is zero. Therefore, the two lines are parallel as well. And another example, this time we deal with two vertical lines. X is kept the same, but Y can travel, Y can be anything. So since these two lines are vertical, the slope for both of them is undefined. And yes, the two lines are parallel. So in all three examples, we had pairs of parallel lines. The slant ones, the horizontal ones, and the vertical ones. Now let's observe slopes of perpendicular lines. How are they related? Let's look at this first line. The slope of this line is a over b. That's the slope, a over b. What if we rotate this line counterclockwise by 90 degrees? Well, we obtain a perpendicular line we can mark it by a perpendicular sign like this. And let's see what's going on with the slope of such a line. If you look at the image of this triangle with the sides A and B under the rotation by 90 degrees, this triangle will actually move over here. That's the same triangle, it just rotated 90 degrees. Therefore, the arrow corresponding to A will actually move to the left. That will be the A steps, but to the left, so it's like negative A. And the arrow corresponding to B will move over there, it's still positive B. So the slope is rise over run. And since the rise is B and the run is negative A, so how can we obtain a perpendicular slope? By reversing the fraction, instead of A over B we have B over A, and changing its sign. So there is two changes. Flip it and switch the sign. Slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. Opposite because we switch the sign, reciprocals because we interchange numerator with denominator. 
So let's practice as before. Find out if the following equations represent perpendicular lines or not. In this example, we have two lines that are given not in a standard form and not in slope intercept form. So we have two ways of dealing with it. We could convert both of these equations to slope intercept form and then compare slopes. Or we can convert both of these equations to a standard form and use the formula negative a over b for a slope. Maybe this time let's solve it for y and see the slope as a coefficient by the x. So we could move the 6x to the other side and divide by 3. So we'll get y equals 6 divided by 3 is 2x plus 5 thirds. Therefore our slope for this line is 2. Let's see the other line. Let's solve it for y again. 2y equals negative x plus 5. And then when we divide by 2, the y would be negative 1 divided by 2. So negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. Okay, so this time our slope is negative 1 half. Let's record this on the side. The first slope, m1, is 2, and the second slope, m2, is negative 1 half. Are they perpendicular? Well, let's see. When we take reciprocal of 2, we have 1 half, and opposite to the plus is minus. So yes, indeed, those are two perpendicular slopes. Therefore, we can say the lines are perpendicular. And again, we can use this perpendicular sign to replace the word perpendicular. Notice that there is another way of checking if two slopes are indeed perpendicular. It's enough to multiply them and the result should be negative 1. Like here, 2 times negative 1 half is indeed negative 1 because the two cancel and we end up with negative 1. Why does it work? Well, because if I have any slope a over b and I multiply by opposite reciprocal of this slope, after reducing a's and b's, I will always end up with negative 1. So that's another way of showing that the slopes are perpendicular. So to find a perpendicular slope, we're taking opposite reciprocal of the given slope. But to check if two slopes are perpendicular, it's enough to multiply the two slopes and obtain negative 1. OK, let's look at the next example. What can we say about slopes of these two lines? Well, the first slope is the coefficient by the x because this equation is in a slope intercept form. So it's 1. And the second slope is negative 1. The coefficient by the x is negative 1. So do you recognize those lines? Well, the first line is actually a diagonal. A diagonal like this y equals x. And the second line is actually the other diagonal that goes downwards like this, y equals negative x. So since both diagonals cut the quadrants exactly in half, then this angle is 45 degrees and that angle is 45 degrees, making it 90 degrees together. So yes, they are perpendicular. So that's a graphical way of seeing that the two lines are indeed perpendicular. And that's an algebraic way. The two numbers, 1 and negative 1, those are opposite reciprocals. So yes, the lines are perpendicular. In the last example, this time we deal with a vertical line, x equals negative 1. Well, how does it look like? If this is negative 1, the line x equals negative 1 looks like this. And the line y equals 3, let's say 3 is here, it will look somehow like this. Obviously, since one line is vertical and the other horizontal, the two lines are perpendicular as well. This is vertical and that's horizontal. OK, but what if someone would like to compare slopes? Well, there's no problem with horizontal. The slope of any horizontal line is zero. But for a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So according to our rule, those slopes should be opposite reciprocals. But how can we take opposite reciprocal of zero? 
First of all, zero doesn't have a sign, so it's hard to take anything opposite to it. Secondly, the reciprocal of zero would be one over zero, which doesn't exist. However, intuitively, if we take one over something that is very close to zero, something that comes towards zero, but not exactly zero, we can't really divide by zero, right? So one over a very, very tiny number, it's a very large number. This whole thing is actually quite large. It goes towards infinity. And that's some connection with the undefined part. So that's just a little bit of intuition here. Formally, we can't take opposite reciprocal of zero, neither of something that is not defined. Also, the second rule, multiplying these two slopes and obtaining negative one, is not very useful for us, because if we multiply zero times something that doesn't exist, we have no idea what it may be. So this is exceptional case that we can't really use the algebraic method to find that these two lines are indeed perpendicular. However, we know that any vertical line is perpendicular to a horizontal line, so we can still answer this question. And here are two examples of seeing perpendicular lines in real life. An intersection. Most of the intersections are perpendicular but not all of them. Most of our furniture have lots of perpendicular lines, have lots of right angles. In summary, if we denote M1 and M2, the slopes of two lines, then we can say that the lines are parallel if and only if the two slopes are exactly the same. Also, we can say that the lines are perpendicular if and only if the two slopes are either opposite reciprocals or when we multiply them we obtain negative one. Notice that these two statements are equivalent. It's enough, for example, start with this equation and divide it by m2 and we obtain the first equation. One more thing that we need to talk about is collinear points. Those are points that will lie on the same line. How to recognize that the set of points is actually collinear? Well, we are looking at slope between each pair of them. For example, slope from A to B should be the same as slope from A to C. And also, it should be the same as slope from A to C as well. So if we choose any pair of points and calculate slope, those slopes should be exactly the same that means that all points lie on the same line, because constant slope is a property of a line. OK, let's check if the following points are collinear. So what we want to check is, for example, the slope of segment AB. Let's put it as a subindex AB. And remember, how do we calculate slope? Difference in Y coordinates over difference in X coordinates. So we have negative 2 minus negative 1 difference in y coordinates over difference in x coordinates 1 minus 3 so that becomes negative 2 plus 1 so it's negative 1 1 minus 3 is negative 2 so altogether 1 half okay let's check some other slope maybe slope of for example bc why not okay difference in y coordinates negative 1 minus 0 over difference in x coordinates 3 minus 5. So we get negative 1 over 3 minus 5 is negative 2. It is 1 half as well. Notice that in this case it is actually enough to check these two slopes because B is common for the segment AB and for the segment BC. So we don't really have to check the slope AC. It will be exactly the same as long as these two are the same. But just for practice, let's check it. AC. Difference in Y coordinates negative 2 minus 0 over difference in X coordinates 1 minus 5. So we have negative 2 over negative 4, which indeed is 1 half. Therefore, points ABC are collinear. OK, now let's check if a point D with given coordinates as shown belongs to the line AB. Hmm. We know that AB and C 
are on the same line. Obviously, I'm not drawing it in the system of coordinates, just a general diagram to help us understand. So, point D could be here, could be there, or could be a bit off the line, maybe somewhere there, or maybe somewhere here. We don't know it. Where is our point D? Even if we graph it in a system of coordinates, this point could be on the line or could be slightly off the line and we may not be able to detect it unless we calculate the slope. So, for example, we could calculate slope DC and figure out is the slope the same as the slope of the line or not. So, is it the same as one half or not? If it is the same, the point will be on the line. If it's not the same, the point is outside of the line. So let's calculate slope of, for example, DC. Obviously, I could calculate DB or DA. It doesn't matter. I chose C just because one of the coordinates is zero and it could be easier to calculate. So, difference in Y coordinates, negative five halves minus zero, this zero, over negative one half minus the first coordinate of C, which is five. Now, since we deal with complex fraction, we want to get rid of those little denominators. So let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by two. Okay, so we end up with two times negative five halves. The two will cancel, so we end up with negative five. And the zero disappears, so it's just negative five in the numerator. Over there, two times negative one half, the two cancels, so you have negative one and two times negative five is negative 10. So all together we have negative five over negative 11. Okay, so it's five elevenths. As you see, this is very close to one half, but it's not equal to one half. So it's a bit off the line. Therefore, D is not collinear with A, B, and C. Or we can say even shorter, D does not belong to the line AB.